The writer in Song of Solomon encourages us not to arouse nor awaken love before it so desires. I have taken matters into my own hand on many occasions and I have paid dearly with my emotions. One of my subscribers has asked me to share my thoughts on love, relationship and marriage. Truth be told, I have nothing to add of my own, nothing new. I am still waiting on love because I am listening to the author of the love poems, the song of love. And it says, do not arouse nor awake love before love so desires to be arose or awaken. My subscriber, I am not married, so I am no authority on the subject. So I'm happy that you had only asked for my thoughts, you know, my own opinion. I can only refer to the Christian guide, you know, our Bible as we know it, and ask her to be tuned into the best utterances about love, relationship, and marriage. That she would be one with the writings of the Song of Solomon. When you feel within your spirit that you understand and have an appreciation for the language of love, then and only then must you attempt the journey of marriage. That's what I am saying to her. I would like that I can call my spouse lover and he to refer to me as beloved. I would want to be delighted to serve him with joy and to be there in sickness as in health until death. That's when we should part. We should be best friends. I have developed seven facts to be considered before marriage. So watch until the end of the video so that you can share my opinion and my thoughts. Remember, I am not married and um, these are just my facts, you know, my opinion, which I am calling facts. I must confess that I search for certain qualities in a partner and the most important are these seven that I have listed. This list can change, you know, but right now this is the list that I am working with. We can discuss this in the comment section. I am sure that you look for qualities of your own in a spouse and you have your list and so you can raise your white flag or your red flag when you see the qualities exhibited or not exhibited. Firstly, I want to know about my spouse's relationship with his parents and siblings. Yes, that is important to me. What is your relationship with your parents and your siblings? Because I would not want to be in a relationship with someone who has an estranged relationship with family. Number two, I want to know your friends. I want to know your family. Don't tell me that you have no friends. No, if you have no friends, then I can't be your friend. Why you don't have any friends? No, you must have some friends. Your family is your family. Your siblings are your siblings. But what about persons that you have um, developed social relationship with? Humans are social beings, you know. So I would want to know and to be introduced to some of your friends and your family. What kind of person you are? Are you a caring, loving, kind-hearted person? Are you a good listener? Can I come to you and say, you know, such, such, such has happened, or this part of me is hurting? I am not well. Are you a caring person? Can I assume that you will be there for me when I go through my job season? Can I assume that if I am sick, you will be there for me? It is important. I must earn your respect from the get-go. I am not going to ask you to respect me. No. What you see in me should determine whether I earn your respect. And if what I see in you does not earn my respect, then we can't continue to date. We can't continue to waste time. I will not appreciate a spouse who does not respect me. So if I don't deserve or earn your respect, then it doesn't make sense. We will be at lover's head. We will be unequally yoked. What about honesty in thoughts and expression? Can I trust what my partner says to me? Can I trust that whatever he's saying to me, that 
what he believes in with all his heart. I want to know that. Can we have openness and honesty in conversation? Will you have to be deciding that, oh, I can't say this to her, I don't want to say that to her? How open can you be? Can we have, you know, regular discussions about any topic? Will you come to me for advice? Will you respect my opinion? I want to know all that too. Oh, then how honest are you with money? Will you be hiding your money? Will you be stingy? Are you a stingy partner? But will you share your financial resources with me? Will we pool our resources? Yeah, I would like that my partner agrees that if I come to him as my partner and say, my lover, um, can you give me a dollar? Yes, that my lover, you know, will give me a dollar. But I will also want my lover to understand that if he comes to me and say, my beloved, can I have a dollar? I will say, yes, it's going to be a loan. I'm going to want it back. Many men do not appreciate this quality in me. So I am putting up my hand. I am at fault. One man says, listen, I can't talk to you because for one, you'd want me to give you my money, but you would only lend me yours. And it's not fair. I understand. It's not fair. Well, that's how I want it to be for now. Fundamentally, and my last fact is that I have a desire to have the relationship, you know, with a purpose from the get go. Why are we in this relationship? Is it, you know, one that we consider leading to marriage? I don't want to be wasting your time. I don't want you to be wasting my time. So from the get go, we have to know what it is that we want. If further down the road, it doesn't work out fine. But from the beginning, I am willing to share me. I am willing to share my resources, my ideas and all of that. I don't want you to be wasting your time with me. I don't want to be playing games. No. So on love and relationship, I think love will be awakened and are aroused when love is ready, you know, and then we take a step forward into a relationship with the understanding that we should get married. Long periods of courtship, in my opinion, are distressing. What is it that you want to know that is going to take you 12 months, 24 months, 5 years, 10 years? What is it that you want to know? What is it that you are trying to find out about me that 6 months was not enough? We have met. You have met my parents, my family, my friends. We have been around each other. Honesty in thoughts and action. Why do you need 24 months? I don't need that. Remember now you know that this subscriber asked for my thoughts and opinion, my personal opinion on the matter of love and relationship and marriage. Yes, I would love very much the joy of a shared life and especially you know, on this leg of my life's journey. But still, I will wait. I do not want to arouse nor awaken love before love is ready. I want to be sure that I am ready to be responsible for your meals, your clothing, and to share a bed every night. So I have five other points that I'm gonna put forward to make sure that when I am ready for marriage, these five issues would have been dealt with. Right, so let's go. I have stated already one, you know, the sleep issue. Now I have to find out from myself, do I love enough to care for your clothing? Will I wash, iron, fold and pack your clothes with all the love that is required of me? Or will I need to justify my doing these duties based on how I feel about you at a particular time? To take up domestic chores or tasks, you know, for someone, it's, it takes a lot. And to, you know, prepare your clothing. Your clothing that you have worn and have soiled, and then it becomes my responsibility to prepare them for the next outing. 
If I am not happy, then I will not be doing it joyfully. I will be refusing. I will be rebelling. I might even be saying, you are the one who have soiled them, hence you need to clean them. But if we are in love and there is respect for each other, then surely I would see it as my responsibility. Number three. Hmm. So many things to consider. What about morning breath? You know, and farting in bed. These are major issues. Morning breath. You know, it's not pleasant. Because you have your mouth maybe closed overnight. Bacteria doing its, thing, its things. Other microorganisms are there. Yet persons want to wake up and just want to be talking in your face, you know. How do I say to my partner, listen, you need to take care of your morning breath. Or would I be annoyed if he says that to me? What about farting in bed? We're lying there. You know, you are maybe behind me. And then a whole bulldozing emits my body. It's not cool. Well, for me, it's not cool. I wouldn't want my partner to be consciously doing that. I have a major problem with that. On a regular basis, as if it's nothing, I have a problem with that. So you see, I have to fix me. So my subscriber, remember I am talking about my issues, my situations, the things that I know will affect me and these things are important for my partner and I to discuss before we enter into marriage. Remember, I am not married and maybe these little issues are the ones that are holding me back. I don't know. How should we hang the toilet paper on the roll? Should it be running on the outside? Should it be running on the underside? This can be a major issue, especially if you have certain personality type to deal with. This can be major, major issue. How should the toilet seat be kept? Should, we, should it be in the up position? Should it be in the down position? So many things to consider during the getting to know you phase, the phase when I come to your house, the, the phase when you come to my house. So many things. When we go out, how do I conduct myself? How do I eat? Do I stir up the food like a glutinous person? Or am I eating? Am I just chop, 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 chopping and going along? Am I just constantly talking with food in my mouth and it's been, you know, spilling all over? It has been spitted in your face. And then it's an embarrassing situation to say to your partner, no, don't talk. Do not talk with food in your mouth. Because we would have expected that these common etiquettes were dealt with a long time ago. And for grown persons to be, you know, trying to train somebody in these basic things, it can be very annoying. We need to do our homework. We need to do our groundwork before we think about marriage. These things have to be discussed. These things have to be understood when we are in the getting to know you phase of the relationship. And they must be sorted out before marriage. Lest we are unhappy in our marriages and start blaming each other for the things that we should have dealt with during the relationship, the getting to know you, the courtship phase. Many persons are in relationships and enter into marriage. Why? Because, okay, I am a Christian and I am not supposed to be doing certain things. It is the sex, the conjugal part of the relationship that has thrown many persons into marriage. Yes, sex and lovemaking. That is what has thrown many persons headlong into a relationship of pain. Oh, I am in church and you know um, I have to get married because I can't be seeing this person so 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 I wish to visit him I want to know this I want to do that blah 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 and the my um, Christian brothers and sisters will not understand and I do not want to be judged so I have to get married for what for sex that's it's no reason that is the least of the reasons I think that one should get married. And then 
you're in a relationship five, six, ten years, going nowhere. What are you doing in it? What are you waiting for? If you have invested, come on. What are you? Decide that, hey, this ain't working out. So let us share what we have accumulated over time and we go our separate ways. Why are you going to stay in something that ain't going anywhere? Brothers, sisters, just wake up. Wake up. I would like, as a matter of fact, I would love to have a spouse. But can I make him happy? I don't know. Since I have been reading the book of Songs of Solomon, and as mentioned previously, he has admonished us not to arouse nor awaken love before love so desires. What does he mean by this? The author has entreated us. To, he says, you must speak to your spouse at all times in a positively knowing way. Both parties must be respectful of each other. Also, we must make an effort to understand the message that is given. In Solomon's chapter 7, verses 7, 8, and 12, this is important to have a rich conjugal relationship. My friends, let us be guided by God and by persons who are, you know, in authority on the subject of love and relationship leading to marriage. Let us strive to wait on love. Let us not, you know, go ahead and do things the way we want to. The author of the Song of Solomon says, not to arouse nor awaken love before it is ready. My friends, you have stayed with me this long. I appreciate your staying with me. This is part of my journey and you are welcome. Thank you for journeying with me. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like, comment, share the videos. Your subscription is important. Your watch time is important. Sharing the videos is very important. Thank you. I am June, sending love, much love from Jamaica. Until the next video, stay blessed.